Before we get into the important rules for radicals and roots on the SAT, let's remember how radicals fit into the big picture for arithmetic and algebra. I use germ dust to represent the order of operations because it includes the R, which stands for roots and radicals, and it pairs the R with the E for exponents, reminding us that these operations work together very well. In a way, they're actually the same thing. Most of the time, we'll use radicals to cancel out exponents when we're trying to solve for x. We also use exponents to cancel out radicals, but as we'll see later, we probably want to let the calculator handle those kinds of equations for us. For now, let's start with some simple but very important rules for radicals having to do with negatives. First, remember that we can never take the square root of a negative number. You might have learned about imaginary numbers in school, but they do not show up on the SAT. We should just remember that taking the square root of a negative number is like dividing by zero, in that both situations cause big problems in equations. You should also know that the square root symbol is only ever asking us for the positive root when it appears in an equation. You might have learned in school that we need to include the negative root, but that's not quite right. If we use a square root when we solve, then we might need to remember the negative root. But if the equation itself contains the radical symbol, then we only want the positive root. The SAT absolutely designs questions with traps based on this rule. On the other hand, cube roots and other odd numbered roots can handle negatives just fine. As you can see here, the cube root of positive 8 is positive 2, and the cube root of negative 8 is negative 2. Calculators will be able to handle these situations for you, so you don't really need to remember them. To create a cube root, or anything greater than a square root in Desmos, follow these steps. First, click the keyboard button on the bottom left. Then hit the functions button on the right. Then scroll all the way down to the end root button near the bottom of the list. This is a good spot to backtrack a little and remind ourselves what a radical actually means. The mathematical definitions tend to sound a bit confusing. The r root of a number is the value that equals the number when the value is multiplied by itself r times. Using actual numbers makes radicals easier to understand. The square root or second root of 16 is 4 because 4 multiplied by itself 2 times is 16. Similarly, the cube root or third root of 8 is 2 because 2 multiplied by itself 3 times is 8. Radicals are much easier to work with if we memorize the most common perfect squares and perfect cubes. When we take the root of perfect numbers, we get nice, simple integers. Every other number will produce irrational numbers, which are messy, never-ending decimals. A lot of questions involving radicals and exponents are incredibly easy if you can quickly recognize that 25 and 49 are special numbers. Simplifying radicals is easier if you know the perfect numbers too, but it's not absolutely necessary. My favorite method for simplifying radicals is to break the radical down into its prime factors using whatever pairs you see first. For example, the square root of 600 can be simplified by following lots of different paths, but my first instinct is to break it into 100 times 6. Then I break the 100 into 10 times 10, and each of the 10s into 5 times 2. The 6 gets factored into 2 times 3. Once each branch ends in a prime number, we know that we will be able to fully simplify the radical. Make groups of the same prime number. Since this is a square root, we make pairs. I can make a group of fives and a group of twos. There are also some loners that can't pair up. The only three has to stay behind, and there is an extra two that I can't put into a group. The grouped numbers come out as single values, and the loners stay behind under the radical. We finish simplifying by multiplying all of the outsides and all of the insides, so we find that the square root of 600 is the same as 10 root 6. To be clear, if we had started out by breaking up the 600 a different way, we still would have gotten to the same final answer because we'd have branches ending in the same prime numbers. Feel free to try it on your own by breaking the 600 into 200 times 3, or 10 times 60. If you know the perfect squares, you can also take shortcuts once you see branches with the same number, like when we split the 100 into two tens. But I actually think it takes a lot more effort to find the biggest perfect squares that are factors of big numbers like 600. The prime factorization method lets us work with smaller, easier numbers. Other roots, like cube roots, will work the same way. Notice that our prime factorization is the same as before. That's because 600 is always made up of the same prime factors. But now, when we make groups, we have to make groups of three because this is a cube root. If it were a fourth root, we'd make groups of four. If it were a fifth root, we'd make groups of five, and so on. We can only make a group of twos. The three is a loner again, but so are the two fives because we don't have enough fives to make a triple. 
Once again, the group of twos comes out as a single two, and the loners stay behind under the radical. Multiply to fully simplify as 2 times the cube root of 75. On the SAT, you might not have to simplify radicals manually because you can convert any version of a radical into a decimal in the calculator, then compare the decimals to see if they are the same value. In general, the calculator will make a lot of radicals much easier to work with on the SAT, but it's not always going to be more efficient than solving manually. As you can see with these examples, it's very easy to break apart or combine radicals when we are multiplying or dividing. You should be comfortable making these kinds of moves on the SAT without reaching for the calculator. Just be careful when the radical involves a regular number outside of the radical. The outside and inside numbers act differently, and we have to keep them separate in situations like these. Notice that performing an operation with a regular number only affects the regular number attached to the radical, not the value that's under the radical. The most annoying situations are when radicals involve addition or subtraction. If the number under the radical is the same, we can combine them, almost like we do x's. So root 5 plus root 5 is 2 root 5. But when the numbers under the radicals are different, we're almost certainly going to need a calculator. Root 5 plus root 7 is not root 12. Similarly, when there's addition or subtraction under the radical, we can't split the terms into separate radicals like we did before. These situations are groupings, which is what the G in Germdas stands for. They need to be broken apart using more complicated algebra, usually by applying exponents to both sides of an equation. But we really want to avoid solving those kinds of situations manually on the SAT. Remember that the Desmos calculator can solve equations for us. If we type this one into Desmos, we'll quickly get our solution, which will look like a vertical line at x equals 3. The algebra way to solve this isn't too bad, but it's still messy, risky, and time-consuming. We'd square both sides, create a quadratic equal to zero, then factor and solve. But be careful, there's a trap answer here. The algebra tells us that x can also equal negative 1, but that's not true. If we plug negative 1 back into the equation, we get that the square root of 1 is equal to negative 1. But we said earlier that the radical symbol only produces the positive root. Since positive 1 does not equal negative 1, this solution is actually wrong. This is what's known as an extraneous solution, and it's a big complication with radicals. Sometimes, even when we do all the algebra correctly, we end up with an answer that does not work in the original equation. In school, we would have to plug our answers into the original equation to check if they actually make sense. But on the SAT, all of this extra work and this potential trap can be avoided by simply using the Desmos calculator. There might be situations where the SAT cleverly designs questions that force us to work with radicals and roots in more traditional manual ways, but those situations should be rare. For the most part, you should avoid algebra and let the calculator help you with the radical equations and the messy decimals that radicals produce. Thanks for watching.